Hello student doctors, my name is Alvin Ha. I'm a fourth year medical student here at Western U. Today I'll be demonstrating how to perform a general endocrine exam. With each component of, the, of this exam, I will be explaining to you how to do, what to do, and most importantly, why. Starting with the general exam, we're going to make a general observation of the patient. Does he appear obese, frail, fatigued, are there tremors, and does he exhibit hoarseness when speaking to him? Hoarseness is indicative of a possible thyroid problem. Now on to the HEE and T exam, we want to inspect the patient and perform a fundoscopic exam. For patients with diabetes, we want to look for things like hemorrhages, cotton wool spots, and neovascularization. So another thing to look for on the HEE and T exam is to check for exophthalmos, which is indicative for Graves disease. Lastly, one other thing you may want to look for is moon facies, indicative of Cushing's disease or exogenous corticosteroid use. Check this photo here of me on 60 milligrams of prednisone. This is me on 5 milligrams daily. Notice the difference? Now we're going to inspect the neck. And the neck is important because for patients with diabetes, we want to look for things such as acanthosis nigricans. For patients with a thyroid problem, we want to check if the thyroid is symmetric and look for abnormal abnormalities such as is it enlarged, painful, or does the patient have difficulty swallowing. So here we're going to look at the neck. Checking the skin texture, is it velvety, is, is there hyperpigmentation? And I'll look up. And then now we're going to inspect the thyroid. Can I have you swallow? So for the cardio exam, what we want to do is we want to inspect, auscultate, and listen to the carotids for bruits. So Nick, can I have you take off your shirt? Sure. So here we're going to do a general inspection of the chest. Now we're going to listen to his heart. We're going to listen for things like rate abnormalities, murmurs. Now for the carotids, what we want to listen for, if they have a brewery, is a whooshing murmur-like sound. Thank you, Nick. Now for the pulmonary exam, what we want to do is we want to inspect, and for your OSCE, what is expected of you is that you listen three pairs on the front, three pairs on the back, and one pair laterally. So you may be asking yourself, well, what does a pulmonary exam have to do with endocrine? Did you know that hypothyroid patients may present with a pleural effusion? For the abdominal exam, you're expected to inspect, auscultate, percuss, palpate, and evaluate for renal bruits. So on inspection, generalized view of the abdomen, you want to check for abdominal striae, suggestive of Cushing's disease. Oscul for auscultation, we're listening to the bowel sounds to see if they're high-pitched or hypoactive or normal. Now we're going to move on to percussion. For palpation, we want to start superficially and then move deep. To check for renal bruies, here, we're going to listen two to three centimeters superior and lateral to the umbilicus. A positive sign is suggestive of renal artery stenosis. Now for the neurologic component of the endocrine exam, we want to evaluate the upper and lower extremities, motor, sensory, and deep tendon reflexes. This is important because diabetic patients may have decreased sensation to light touch, temperature sensation changes,
proprioceptive changes and loss of deep tendon reflexes, suggestive of peripheral neuropathy. So now let's start with the upper extremities. We're going to evaluate for sensation at C5, 6, 7, 8, and T1. The motor, let's see. Have your fists up and pull towards you. Squeeze my fingers for me. Checking for equal grip strength. And then no reflexes. And the biceps. Remembering to do things bilaterally. Now we're going to evaluate the lower extremities for any neurologic findings. So starting with sensation, we're going to do L2, L3, L4, L5, where the big toe is, and then S1, the lateral feet. Now on to strength. Can I have you push, kick out, okay, and then push down, push up. And for, extra, for reflexes, I'm going to check the patellar So for patients with hyperthyroid, we can expect the reflexes to be brisk, hypothyroid to be somewhat diminished. And now on to skin. In here, subtle findings can help us differentiate various etiologies. First things first, you want to check for signs of dehydration by checking skin torpor. A positive sign would be tenting. For someone we're suspecting diabetes, we want to check the feet to see if it's dry, if there's any muscle atrophy, claw toes, ulcers, and hyperpigmentation as previously mentioned before, usually we can find acanthosis nigricans at the back of the neck, but it's also important to check the armpits. For a patient who may have hypothyroidism, their skin can be dry, and there may be signs of hair loss. For a patient who has Graves' disease or hypothyroidism, their skin may be sweaty, they'll feel warm, now we're on the last part of our exam, which is to check for any osteopathic findings, such as heart changes, indicating visceral somatics. So this completes the endocrine general exam. For a detailed diabetic foot exam, please see my friend and colleague Nick Hatamiya's video. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Best of luck in your studies.